Australia has been slammed for failing to tackle climate change. It comes as talks in Paris encourage countries to ditch subsidies for fossil fuels. Talks, incidentally, that we have walked away from. And that's something we should talk about. Right now, if you were to go out and fill your car up with diesel, included in the cost of that fuel is a tax that goes to maintaining our roads. But in Australia, some people who don't use their vehicles on public roads, like farmers or miners, get what's known as a diesel fuel rebate. So basically, the government pays them 39 cents for every litre they buy. Why should people who don't use public roads pay a tax for public roads. It's estimated the diesel tax rebate costs Australia well in excess of $6 billion every year. Over the next four years, it's estimated it's going to cost us $26 billion. That's money paid to fossil fuel producers or people who buy their products. And here's why that's a problem. Right around the world, developed countries are being encouraged to put an end to subsidies for fossil fuels and invest more in renewable energy. A couple of weeks ago, on one side of the world, we saw one of the largest climate demonstrations in Australia's history. At the same time, on the other side of the globe, at the Paris Climate Talks, almost 40 countries signed up to phase out subsidies that encourage the use of coal, gas and oil. We can show the world what is possible when we come together. While in Paris, our PM promised $1 billion over the next five years to fight climate change, which is great. But when it came to joining other nations and ditching the diesel subsidy, he walked away. He claimed the pledge's definition of what constituted a fossil fuel subsidy was too broad. It uh, goes much, much further than uh, inefficient fuel subsidies. It's the refusal to reform subsidies like these, a refusal Bill Shorten supports, by the way, that today had our climate policies ranked 57th in a list of the world's 58 major emitters. We have literally been called the worst performing industrial country in the world when it comes to tackling climate change. And look, there's no doubt that identifying the diesel tax rebate as a fossil fuel subsidy is a political nightmare for our PM. He has inherited a government from a guy who told us that coal is good for humanity and there remain a lot of backbenchers who continue to believe that. Some of them also believe it will cost jobs. But I don't agree. I actually think it will create them. We know that in 2014, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, the renewable energy industry directly or indirectly employed 7.7 .7 million people around the world. That, by the way, is an 18% increase on the year before, and it's expected to double in size in the next 15 years. We know that just eight industrialised nations collectively spend $80 billion in fossil fuel subsidies each year. And those same countries spend only $2 billion annually on climate aid to the Green Climate Fund. So that is a ratio of 40 dirty dollars for every clean one. And we know it's estimated that we can only burn between one-fifth and a third of fossil fuels buried in the ground before we tip the scales and warm the planet by more than two degrees. And let me nip this in the bud, Andrew Bolt, before you launch into your hole. The planet has stopped warming line that you've been running for the past few years. There's been no warming for some 16 years. The world's atmosphere hasn't really warmed for some 17 years. As I keep showing you, there has been no real warming of the atmosphere for around 18 years now. This is Carl Mears, the guy whose graph you keep using. We tracked him down. He has a message for you. It's pretty clear that the globe has warmed over the last 18 years. When you do real science, you can't just use the data sets that fit your pre-drawn conclusion, but you really need to look at all the data together. So you need to look at the satellite data sets, and you also need to look at the surface data sets, such as the one produced by um, NOAA here in the United States. NOAA, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, are the guys who tell us that the 10 hottest years since 1880, when records began, have all happened in the last 18 years. They say that last year was the hottest year on record, and 2015 isn't looking any better. You see, we can't go on denying that climate change is real. And we can't continue to find emotional or even incorrect reasons not to act on it. We stopped subsidising the local car industry when we realised it had no future. It wasn't an easy choice, but it was a choice we were prepared to make. And if we don't stop subsidising fossil fuels, then it's us, our children, their children, whose futures will be in doubt. We know the world's watching our next move. So now is not the time for our leaders just to walk away.